Of all the celebrated heroes of the Philippine Revolution, one stands out among the rest. After all, you wouldn't suspect Tandang Sora of being a revolutionary at first sight. But the heroine's life is proof that anyone can answer the call of justice. For this video, join us as we learn all about the Philippines' fiercest Lola, the one and only Tandang Sora. Before she was known as Tandang Sora the Revolutionary, Melkora Aquino actually lived a pretty normal life. She was born in 1812 into a family of farmers in Barrio Banlat, Caloocan. She never had a chance to attend school, but that didn't stop her from being a successful young woman. In fact, she was known to be literate even without any formal education. She was also known as a talented singer and often performed at local fiestas as well as during mass. But Melkora wasn't just talented, she was known for her beauty too. She was often chosen the Reina Elena during Santa Cruzan. Aside from her gifts, what was most special about Melkora was her compassion. In her village, she was known as a mangagamot who always helped her neighbors out when they had minor illnesses and injuries. Little did she know back then that these healing abilities would help contribute to Philippine independence one day. Later on, Melkora married the village chief Pulhensio Ramos. They had six children together, but unfortunately, Ramos died just a couple of years after their youngest was born. Despite that, Melkora continued her duties as the Hermana Mayor and remained active in celebrating important community events like fiestas, baptisms, and weddings. It was not until Melkora was well into her 80s that she joined the revolutionary movement. You see, in order to provide for her children, Melkora had a store in her barangay. Little did she know, this store would someday become a revolutionary hideout. It was through Melkora's son, Juan, that the Katipunan found out about Melkora's store and chose it as a hideout. Juan himself was associated with the revolutionary forces, and it was through him that the Katipunan started using his mother's shop as a refuge for their wounded soldiers. Melkora the Mangagamot returned, this time to ease the pains and dress the wounds of the Philippines' revolutionary army. She used her skills to help revitalize the Katipuneros and even used her own resources to provide for hundreds of troops. She gave them more than 100 caverns of rice and even 10 carabaos. The nickname Mother of the Philippine Revolution fits perfectly with Melkora. She really mothered so hard. Melkora sympathized with the soldiers. Perhaps she found that what they were fighting for, independence and self-governance, were values she held as well. Her house and shop became not just a temporary hospital, but also a secret meeting spot for the Katipunan. In turn, the grateful Katipuneros affectionately gave Melkora the nickname Tandang Sora. On August 23, 1896, Bonifacio and more than a thousand other revolutionaries arrived at Melkora's doorstep. It was a historic day. The Katipunan planned to stage a revolt throughout Caloocan and present-day Quezon City. Melkora not just welcomed them, but joined them as well. She and her son Juan were present in one of the Katipunan's most famous events, the Sigaw ng Pugadlawin, where the revolutionaries symbolically tore their cedulas apart. Unfortunately, back in those days, you couldn't help the Katipunan without being questioned by the Spaniards. They quickly learned about Tandang Sora aiding and sympathizing with the revolutionaries, and as a result, she was arrested by the Guardia Civil on August 29, 1896. She was held captive in the house of a village chief in Novaliches before being transferred to Bilibid Prison in Manila. Remember that at this point, Tandang Sora was 84 years old. Even young and able-bodied people suffer when being interrogated by the Spanish government. What more someone who's already in their 80s? The Spaniards did not hold back. There are reports of grueling and violent prison interrogations, but Tandang Sora remained resolute and refused to divulge any information about Bonifacio and his forces. She was punished for her royalty to the Philippine Revolution. On September 2, 1896, Tandang Sora was deported to Guam and placed under house arrest in the residence of Juan Don Justo Dunca. When the United States defeated Spain and took control of the Philippines by 1898, Tandang Sora, 
and many other Filipino exiles returned to the country in 1903. She was already 86 by the time the Philippine-American War ended, but she still had many years to look forward to. When people learned about her bravery and contribution to the revolutionary effort, they tried to give her monetary rewards, but she refused them all. Tandang Sora did not need any rewards for her patriotism. The knowledge that she had contributed to the Philippines' independence was already more than enough. Tandang Sora died peacefully at her daughter's house in 1919. She was 107 years old. As recognition of her valor and nationalism, her remains were first interred at the Mausoleum of the Veterans of the Revolution at the Manila North Cemetery. She was then transferred to the Himlayang Pilipino Memorial Park in Quezon City in 1970, before finally being transferred to the Tandang Sora National Shrine in 2012, where her remains are held to this day. Today, we remember Tandang Sora as one of the heroes that fought for our hard-earned independence. Her story shows us that there are many ways to be revolutionary. The simple act of being compassionate and helping each other out can indeed change the world. Justice knows no age, gender, or social status. All of us can take inspiration from Tandang Sora and learn to be open to new ideas no matter where we are in life. If you were in Tandang Sora's shoes back then, do you think you would have also risked it all to fight for our independence? Tell us about it in the comment section down below. Like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to keep learning with us.